Unlocked here on the Arcade Studio Podcast channel. This week, I'm going to be talking about the traditional and iconic All Black Hacker. So please remember to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave some comments down below. And now, let's go to my thoughts on the Hacker. So yeah, so why are we talking about the Hacker this week? Well, Joe Marler put his foot in it last week, and uh, he uh, went on Twitter to say that uh, for him, the Hacker should be uh, abolished, and uh, it's only good when... Uh, rugby teams sort of front up against each other in 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 a hacker situation uh, and also the opposition gets to have their say basically because at the moment pretty much what happens is the national anthems get sung and then the all blacks do their hacker in the middle of the field amplified it's going through the stadium and the other team just basically has to stand there and accept the challenge right there have been iconic moments like uh, the english doing their flying v formation at the 2019 world cup semi-final uh, and Owen Fer Farrell's little smirk, which has gotten a rise out of a lot of people. But, um, you know, that was really cool to watch uh, a team, like, find their own way of accepting the, channel, the challenge and throwing down their own. And perhaps uh, the biggest one was, uh, and that's one that got uh, World Rugby sort of changed the laws around what, um, what could happen during the haka, was when the French literally just walked right up to the, to the haka and they wouldn't back down. They just stared their opposite number in the eyes and really had to be separated by the refs uh, so that the game could start. And that, for me, was amazing. That really got my adrenaline going in a million, and, uh, and it was fantastic. Now, as a South African rugby fan, I, I have a love and hate relationship with the, with the Haka. It's amazing to watch these guys, especially in the modern iteration. If you're going back and see the one in the 70s, it looked a little bit like seeing blackface. But if you go to um, to to the modern versions, it is uh, it's phenomenal. It's done really well. The players are all understanding what they are saying. Uh, there is an intensity. The, their movements are studied and they are uh, deliberate. So it it feels like they're really feeling it. Now I wouldn't go as far as Aaron Smith with the spear prop. Uh, at the World Cup final uh, in 2023. For me, that's maybe going a little bit further than what a rugby team should be doing. You know, weapons don't really have a place on a rugby field. I get it, it's traditional, um, but still, I, I would I felt it was much more threatening, much more uh, intimidating uh, when it was just free hands, no props, and, uh, and just crazy eyes and flashing tongues. Uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. But I, like like Mala, I always thought that if the team on the other side wasn't able to throw down a challenge on their own, uh, it's really giving it a team that's really super, super powerful, like the All Blacks, just a little extra um, something, something to get you, uh, to get your blood going, right? Now, if you talk to South African rugby players, past and present, they all really love accepting the challenge. They really uh, have all found their own way of doing it, and they... Also, the opposition teams have sort of studied what the haka is and have sort of started to accept that it's not just like a war cry, but it's something more, right? There are some really good videos about the haka, which you can go and see over here or over there. I don't really know where I'm going to put it yet. Um, but yeah, they, they really uh, explain to you what the haka is. Uh, and it gives you a deeper sense of understanding, which I think is really cool. But yeah, so, you know, it, it's... I don't like the fact that you can't challenge it, but at the same time, whenever I see it happening, oh, I get excited. It really gets me going. And when that first kickoff goes, I just know that the boys are there with their drilling in a thousand and they are clear headed and they are they want to smash. They, they, their response to the challenge is really just doing that first tackle or that first carry into, into, into contact, uh, really dominating that thing. So, so yeah, at the end of the day, it's a really fun spectacle to see. I think it should be a little bit less coddled from World Rugby, allowing the team on the other side to accept it any way they want. I've also heard uh, it said that maybe, I think it was Egg Chasers Rugby, which is a really good channel. You should go check it out. Um, he was saying that um, basically um, it would be quite cool if it was only used for certain occasions. You know, so like when it's a really big game, a World Cup final or whatnot, then you have a haka. But at the same time, you know, if you're a guy, a Portuguese player or a guy from Namibia or something that gets to face New Zealand for the first time and maybe only time in your career and you've seen the haka as part of your rugby 
uh, rugby loving background as a really important thing and to not have them do that to you to not tell them challenge you that sort of feels like you're less than right so i think like the, 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 if they're going to do the hacker they have to do it to everybody and they can choose which hacker to do uh, they got their two they got the kamate and they got kapo pango uh, which they can use in different situations uh, you know as the occasion demands so yeah let's keep the hacker uh, i don't think joe should have taken ha, have gotten as much shit as he did uh, for what he said because at the end of the day it's an opinion and opinions uh, you know you can say it's wrong but i don't think he should have had the hate that he got uh, he's one of literally one of my favorite podcasters and probably one of my favorite rugby players. He's really changed the game as far as having a rugby player, especially a front row rugby player who is able to articulate thoughts. Um, it's it's phenomenal. You know, it really is, he really is a fantastic follow on Instagram. He's a fantastic follow on YouTube. Uh, and so I definitely think that um, he got a little bit too much hate for for something that at the end of the day, uh, really, you know, it's just an opinion, and um, and it's an opinion shared by many rugby rugby following people. So yeah, so that's my thoughts on this. Remember to like and subscribe again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.